tonight's meeting of the Voting Board of Appeals for order. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, tonight's meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals is being recorded for RCTV live. On uh, You can see it on Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Marcel, the guy. Check www.rctv.org for more information and replay times. <coughs> Uh, all right, so uh, tonight we'll call to meeting the first case, which is case 1701, a continuation of a public hearing in the Selectman's meeting room at Reading Town Hall. Uh, tonight, Thursday, April 6th at 7 p.m. on the uh, petition of Reading Equitable Housing, LLC, who seeks a comprehensive permit to develop 20 units of rental housing within an existing three-story brick building on a 45,779 square foot residentially zoned tract of land under MGL chapter 40B sections 20 to 23 with waivers from zoning requi uh, requirements on the property located at 172 Lubin Street, Reading, Mass. Um, I think so, so just a little bit of housekeeping on that as well. Um, we, I, I, in terms of an agenda, we had originally planned to perhaps start with town's peer reviewers, and one of those would have been Niche Engineering. The representative from Niche Engineering is stuck because of the weather, couldn't get a flight out of D.C. or Maryland or where he is. D.C. Uh, and uh, couldn't make it tonight. So uh, while I'm sure the applicant is teed up to address the Niche Engineering comments, we'll let you go ahead and do that. Uh, but we also have a representative from, from Green on the... Um, uh, traffic and parking. So we'll probably start with the traffic and parking peer review presentation, give the applicant obviously a uh, an opportunity to respond to that, any board commentary on that. Um, we'll defer Niche Engineering's report itself and the content of the report, uh, but since you're, like I said, you're probably teed up to respond to that, we'll let you have that at that so you have your on the record uh, discussion on it. Uh, and then we'll work with town council to coordinate uh, Mitch's response to the applicant's response and or any um, uh, materials contained in the Niche March 21 uh, report for perhaps the next meeting, whether they respond in writing or they want to come in and, and present themselves. We'll sort of defer that because they can't be here tonight. And I think other than any board comments with regard to uh, traffic and engineering, uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, information in uh, from both town peer reviewers and, and the, uh, the, the developers team. Uh, I've had an opportunity to look at what I think is most of it. comes in sometimes in dribs and drabs, but voluminous, as you know. And so the board uh, certainly will be given an opportunity to, to discuss anything that we have in front of us tonight, and then we'll, we'll probably pick another night and have you come back and see what else is uh, needed. So. Uh, without further ado, we'll invite the uh, representative from Green International Affiliates to uh, have the floor. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, my name is Jason Sobel. I'm with Green International, a uh, traffic engineer. Um, many of you are probably familiar with, uh, with the work I've done for uh, the Reading BJA in the past. Um, so just a, a quick overview of our review. Um, uh, we did a uh, initial review of the documents, the relevant documents, which included the, the site plan itself. Um, although it wasn't, a, 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 we did not perform a comprehensive review of the site plan as that was uh, Niche's responsibility. We just focused on the traffic, circulation, and, and parking issues, and, and loading, and, and things of that nature. And uh, as well as the traffic study submitted uh, by Vanessa, uh, prepared by Vanessa Associates on behalf of the applicant. Uh, in addition to reviewing the documents submitted, we, uh, we went out to the site, walked around, observed existing conditions, and uh, became familiar with the area, or, or even more familiar with the area. Uh, so we submitted our initial um, letter, uh, report of our findings. 
uh, almost a month ago, March 10th. And uh, I'm not going to go through that point by point. Um, but that letter was essentially broken up into two portions, one focusing on the traffic study and, and the, the off-site traffic and, and impacts and things like that, and then a second portion of the letter uh, focused on the site plan itself, the, the parking and the circulation on the site. Uh, we received a uh, response from Vanass on March 28th, um, responding to the first portion of that letter. Um, I've also reviewed a, a response letter from Sullivan Engineering, um, although that was really directed at uh, Niche's review and directly responding to Niche's review, there was some overlap there as well. Um, so I'm going to hit on some of the key points uh, on both parts of those. Um, I'll start with the off-site um, the off-site traffic study and, and our review of that. Um, so for context and, and reference, this here is Woburn Street. Uh, the aerial photo is a little bit dark, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, the project site right here, St. Agnes Church and uh, Temple Street, which sort of does a 90 degree serving the uh, Parker Middle School back there. Uh, so some of the key points from the, uh, the uh, review of the traffic study, probably the, the, the biggest uh, comment, the, the most significant issue, was that the initial uh, traffic data that were collected as part of the study were done at the end of June when school was not in session. Um, and given the, the proximity of the Parker Middle School and, and that Temple Street is the primary access to the school, um, this end uh, of Temple Street, the, the, the west end of Temple Street, is also signed do not enter during the uh, school hours, during the morning and, and, and the afternoon peaks. Therefore, essentially, all school traffic is entering uh, Temple Street from this end right in front of the site. Uh, as a response to that, Jeff um, and Vin uh, at Vanass, they've collected new traffic data um, a couple weeks ago, and uh, certainly dirt while school was in session. Um, as expected, the, the traffic volume and, and the pedestrian activity in this area it was significantly higher than it was during the summer counts. Interestingly, the, the, the Woburn Street volumes were actually a little bit lower. Um, and as a result of those updated uh, new traffic data counts, uh, they went through and, and updated all their analysis. And uh, there were some changes, um, but really the, the, the outcome and the findings didn't really change. And, and the, the project's uh, trip generation is, is fairly low and uh, there aren't uh, expected to be any significant traffic-related impacts um, at, at either the site drive or, or the Temple Street intersection. Um, so uh, on the whole, I'd say I'm, I'm satisfied with the responses from Vanass uh, to our traffic study comments. There are a couple of things I would like to note, um, and, and this will sort of uh, provide a good segue in, into the site plan comments that, that I had as well. Um, th there were a few items that, that we recommended, um, mostly related to parking. Um, the initial traffic study had recommended uh, no parking within 20 feet of the driveway to ensure sight lines and things of that nature. Um, given the area, and, and, and when we were out there observing things, we actually saw um, a lot of uh, parents picking up their, their kids from school. I'm, I'm assuming not wanting to really deal with school traffic and, and the rush of uh, cars and, and traffic on Temple Street, either just standing, uh, you know, park, parked right in front of the site basically, or even parked along the site driveways themselves, um, waiting for their school kids to cross. There was a crossing guard there, and then the school kids would hop in, in the car and, and get picked up. Um, so we recommended some, uh, you know, cars parked right in front of the site with the proposed exit driveway now on, on the west, sort of the opposite of the existing uh, traffic flow on the site. Um, we had a little bit of a concern with site distance there, um, looking to the east as, as vehicles would exit. Um, the applicant in their response letter has agreed to provide no, no standing at any time, I believe was the exact language of those signs. 
I think that's an appropriate solution. Um, the latest site plan that I've seen, which I believe is dated April 1st, those signs are not yet uh, shown on the site plan. So the applicant said they're going to do it. I think it's a, a perfectly good solution, but, but hasn't yet shown that on the plans. Similarly, along the site drives themselves, uh, again, in, in the response letter from Vanass, they'd indicated that they'd provide the same no standing any time, as well as additional signs to indicate that parking would be for residents and visitors only. Um, again, I think that's a, that's a reasonable solution, but not yet reflected on the site plan. Now I think I'd like to talk about the site plan itself and maybe we could just swap the boards here so we can get the site plan up. All right. So as I, as I said, I, there was a lot of overlap, well, some overlap really between Niche's comments and, and our comment letter. Um, but a few things that I would like to highlight uh, an outdoor bicycle rack. Uh, it was mentioned and discussed in the initial traffic study. Uh, I, I believe it was uh, Vanass raised it again and, and said that it would be shown on the plan, the location of that. It's not yet on the plan. Um, so that's still one minor outstanding item. Um, on, along the entrance driveway, moving along now, so the eastern driveway will be the entrance only. There are four parallel parking spaces provided here. Um, the applicants request a waiver from the town's uh, parking space dimensions requirement, which is uh, generally 9 by 18 is the town's requirement. And that's a typical sized parking space for 90 degree parking or angle parking. Generally, um, parallel parking dimensions are, are a little bit different. Um, you know, the maneuvering is a little bit different into and out of those spaces. Uh, typical parking space uh, for a parallel parking space at the end of a row is eight feet wide by 20 feet. Generally, the parking spaces, parallel parking spaces in the middle of a row are eight by 22. And that's just because with a, with a car in front of you and behind you, you just need that little bit extra maneuver and room into and out of the space. The four parking spaces that are proposed here are all eight by 20. Um, so that, that is something that uh, that we noted in our letter and, and it hasn't been addressed or changed or, or really responded to. Um, another thing that, that I'll raise in this area here is that the proposed lo uh, loading zone is shared with two of those spaces. Um, and I, I think what I'd really like to see is some more information from the applicant about how the parking spaces will be managed. If uh, parking spaces will be assigned to individual apartments, then I don't think the shared parking is a very feasible solution because all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the loading zone, um, you know, if, if a truck is there, someone's moving in and, and someone has that assigned spot, they get home and where am I going to park now? Um, given the number of parking spaces on the site, um, it, it, it might be feasible to, to uh, not have individually assigned parking spaces here. Uh, so I think it would just be good uh, for the applicant to clarify how, how the parking and that loading zone will be managed. Um, and before we move on to the rest of the site, while we're still talking about this parallel parking area, the, uh, the southernmost parallel parking space, um, right at the end of it is a 90 degree parking space. And I think the parking maneuvering into and out of that space would be pretty difficult, especially if a car is parked in that 90 degree space that's, uh, that's right next to the last parallel parking space. This was also an issue that Niche had raised in their comment letter. The applicant responded and said, it's tight, but it'll work. But they haven't really demonstrated how it will work. And, and really what, what we'd be looking for, um, what I'd be looking for, and, and I assume Niche as well, would be some auto turn turning paths. Let's, let's, let's model it. Let's show a car going forward past that parallel parking spot and backing up into it. 
and, and not encroaching into the next adjacent 90 degree parking space. Um, so I don't think I don't think uh, they've, they've fully responded to that that parking space comment yet. Uh, and then along similar lines in terms of parking uh, maneuverability and, and, and traffic circulation through the site. Currently, all the aisles in the site are 22 feet. Um, and that, that's pretty narrow for 90 degree parking. I understand that it's, that it's one way, but uh, it's still 90 degree parking, and particularly if folks have SUVs or pickup trucks, larger vehicles, it's going to be difficult to maneuver in, in and out of those 90 degree parking spaces with a 22 foot aisle. Um, the, the Urban Land Institute has a, has a whole guide called Dimensions of Parking, and, and that's it's a whole manual just on the dimensions of parking. The minimum uh, suggested aisle width for 90 degree parking in there is, is 23 feet. Uh, 24 feet is, is a more typical application for a, a two-way aisle, or for, um, excuse me, a 90 degree aisle. Um, regardless if it's one way or two way, because it's a parking lot, um, you know, even if it were two way, a, a, park, a car backing up would go across both both travel lanes. So, um, so I think the the aisle width is still a concern here. Um, another parking issue, potential parking issue, is uh, the area in the southwest of the site where the dumpster is located. There's three uh, church parking spaces. As I'm sure you all, all know, uh, in addition to the apartment, uh, the 35 parking spaces provided for the, the residential use, there's also the uh, additional parking provided for, uh, for the adjacent church. Um, and I think, you know, that it, it, that's uh, the location of the dumpster is potentially an issue. Um, but again, it would be helpful to have some additional information about you know, scheduled garbage pickup times. And, and if, if it could be managed in such a way that, and it, it might just be as simple as no garbage pickup on Sunday mornings when there's a church service. Um, but again, the, you know, it's possible that, um, you know, it's possible that someone could be parked there. You know, e even though they're church parking spaces, Maybe someone's throwing a party, or maybe having more guests over, or something like that. Guests of residents here could very feasibly be parking in the church parking space, spaces as well. And there's that potential for um, if a garbage truck has to come in and, and get to the dumpster, you know, that that's a potential issue. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then I think the. Uh, well, before I move on to, to my last comment, I, I, as a general comment, um, the applicant is proposing to, pro, uh, proposing to provide more parking than the town requires. Now, I'm sure the applicant ha has reviewed this and, and, and has their own idea of, of how much parking they want to provide. Um, and I only bring this up in the context of, um, you know, it, they are constrained. It's an, it's an existing site. There's an existing building. The, they're somewhat limited in, in the options that they have for the parking. But because they do have more than they need, they may be able to explore other options to, um, to alleviate some of these issues. You know, perhaps they could go to angled parking, and that wouldn't require a wider aisle, because uh, with angled parking, you could get by with a narrower aisle reasonably well. Um, you know, if, if they can find the extra space on the site to have a loading zone that isn't shared with parking spaces, you know, that, you know, and, and if they, if that ends up in a, in a net loss of one parking space or two parking spaces, I think they have, um, they've got more than that and they'd still be above the town requirements. So I would just encourage the applicant to, to sort of explore some other options um, to address some of those parking issues that I've raised. Um, and you know, maybe it means only having two parking spaces, two parallel spaces on on the driveway instead of four, uh, due to you know the, the tight conditions that uh, that are that are there and present on the site. Uh, 
So the parking and circulation is certainly the, the, the main focus of the outstanding concerns that I have. Um, one other minor point, uh, we do have this shared exit driveway for St. Agnes Church and, uh, and the proposed site. And, uh, and overall, that, that's fine. I'm not expecting major issues there. The traffic study, uh, the initial traffic study did recommend um, a stop sign and a stop bar to, to sort of control traffic here. Uh, there is a, a, a pretty big uh, grade difference between the two driveways. So someone coming up from the back of the residence's site might not easily be able to see a car coming coming from the church driveway. Uh, so so um, I agree with the recommendation from the traffic study uh, to show a stop bar and a stop sign here. And uh, the, the site plan currently has a stop sign but, but no stop bar across that driveway. So th those are some recommendations that, that I'd like to see added to the plan. So with that, if there's any questions that the board has, I'd be uh, happy to answer them. Sure. Yeah, perhaps before we have the applicant uh, respond, um, I have a few questions and maybe we'll start with the board members. Do you have any specifically directed to um, the presentation we just heard? Uh, perhaps Robert, um, do you have any questions for the peer review consultant? Yeah, I, I do. I have a couple. Uh, David, thank you. Uh, I, I was concerned on that entrance drive there. I think you brought that up with the parallel parking there, and they have proposed to put their uh, loading zone there also. Now, when I look at that, and it indicates a dimension 21 feet across there uh, for uh, that aisle width uh, at the loading zone. But then it also notes that the loading zone is 12 feet, so that only leaves nine feet left to squeeze by that vehicle. Or if there is a, a vehicle in there, a, a box truck or a moving van or whatever, in that loading zone. I don't know if that'll be sufficient enough. It, yeah. it, it, it would be tight. Um, I think it would, especially for an emergency vehicle. Yeah, I'm talking, you know, maybe a passenger car could get by, they're squeezed by. I don't know if a fire engine could do it or, or an ambulance, etc. Right, right. Now, I wouldn't expect um, typically the, the, a, a truck, a moving truck, they're not 12 feet wide, um, but there is a stockade fence like, located at the edge, so I would expect a couple of feet uh, right. so that the driver could, could even hop out of the door. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a valid concern on, on top of the issue of the shared parking spaces. Um, I didn't want to get into suggesting other locations, but I, I have a couple of thoughts if the applicant and if the board would, would like yeah. to hear. Um, I, I, w I would think that the uh, town fire chief may, may have a concern about that also, and I, I don't know if the applicant has, has discussed this uh, with the fire chief. I haven't seen any letters from uh, uh, the fire chief or anything like that. But uh, it's something that you may certainly want to keep in mind Absolutely, and and I haven't seen any letter of correspondence with the fire chief as well. Yeah. Um, again, you know, I don't want to re-engineer the site for the applicant or anything like that. But um, given given the the more than adequate parking spaces, one thought for loading that I had might be at this corner here, um, close to the exit driveway, but. Uh, Again, maintaining enough of an aisle width there to allow pass or vehicles to pass them. Um, but again, that would require some reconfiguring of the parking, and, and I'm not sure how feasible that is. And that's certainly for the applicant to evaluate and whether or not they think they can do it. Okay. Uh, another concern I had is, and I think you reiterated it too, the concern between the shared parking spaces between the church and really they're not shared they're, they're set aside for the church parking period and you know I look at that as they're probably going to be vacant 90% of the time yet I know this is something that you've had to you, it was, it was part of the agreement with the church when you purchased this that so many spaces had to be set aside for the church and I'm 
wondering if you could, uh, you know, if there could be some type of agreement or something with the church. You know, I would suspect that this mainly is the church overflow parking when, when they don't park up behind the church, etc. And, you know, uh, on, on specific holidays, Easter, Christmas, etc., when, when they do have excessive parking, that they would be using that. I'm just wondering if there could be something done that with the church in regards to that. Well, you know, um, the, the church did come before the board and they, they did get a determination that uh, 96 spaces would be the minimum that they're required to provide. Uh, they did some significant reconfiguration on their own lot to get 72 spaces. Yeah. So we have to provide 24 minimum for their exclusive use is how that decision was written. And we actually, as part of what we need to do here is still get that easement uh, reviewed by town council that shows that it's exclusive and in perpetuity. Right. So that's what we're working with is the 24 we have to provide. The 35 spaces was really town staff was pushing, uh, 30 is the minimum required by zone, one right. and a half per unit. 35 town staff really wanted to see that we would provide on site. So that's the other number we were working with. We still have two, as you'll see tonight. We took, we had seven visitor extras. We took that down to two. Um, so we still have two that we can work with. I'll let Jack get into yeah. that. But so that's really the wiggle room is probably, if you're willing to move off of 35 to 30 or in that area, that's five we can work with. Then we definitely have two we can eliminate if we need to. Yeah. And, 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 and I thought the sheriff was talking about the idea of possibly of ankle parking. Uh, maybe be able to uh, make, make things a bit easier there. questions regarding the, the traffic consultant presentation? Um, actually, um, Robert, well, actually, almost all of them are. Uh, same, same idea as uh, the loading, unloading zone um, being uh, doubled up on two of the parking, parallel parking spaces um, is, a, to me, a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, a distance between a vehicle in there loading or unloading and an emergency vehicle, the emergency vehicle I'm thinking of is probably an ambulance needing to get in there versus uh, perhaps a motor car truck. Police car could get by no problem. Um, the other is um, <clears throat> a major issue is uh, I, I think you talk about things like the bicycle rack, you talk about the uh, crossing area. Um, Yeah, you know, comment number seven. Uh, you talk about uh, the additional uh, no stopping and leaving the front of the uh, area open and be posted for no parking. Um, uh, the distances. Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure how the back portion of the uh, of the dumpster area is going to function yet. Um, I can't, can't quite get that aspect of it. Um, again, it is the room for the, the big um, trucks to back in there, pick up the, pick up the, uh, the refuse, and then get back out uh, past the aisles that we have. But the other concern I had is we haven't got, as far as I've seen, any documentation from either the fire department nor the police department indicating that they've seen the plans and they're in favor or not in favor or whatever. And I believe that's critical to any, any plan that you're, you're proposing here. If we don't have them on board, how can we move forward in saying that that's a safe and relevant um, plan for safety for the occupants? So those are the issues that, I, that I'm coming up with, mostly from what you had, and then I picked up what uh, Jack had on his review picked up. So I mean, we can discuss that later. Okay. And just to add to what the Jack Sullivan, Sullivan Engineering Group, um, we do have an email from the fire chief. He was the one who requested 18 foot wide um, access along the side of the buildings. And that was vetted through the DRT process as well, but we can supply that information to you. That, that, 
it's a good point. It should be on record that the fire chief's agreeable to that. That's why we, we actually had to widen the existing aisles because the existing aisle is only 13 feet wide. So the existing retaining wall on the westerly side has to be pushed back about five feet. New wall constructed just so we can He was comfortable with this plan because he says as long as he can access the building on three sides, that he can fight any fire that comes up. So yeah. he, he has seen this plan, and I, I do. We can, we can provide that email to the to the board. Well, obviously, along the entrance with that loading, if along the vehicle is there, he's not going to get the 18 feet there. And I was going to address that, but I'm going to look at okay. that loading space and based on our current configuration for parking, you can yeah. see it, it's difficult. And even with parallel parking, even if there was no loading there, parallel parking, you said it was eight feet, and it's 21 feet, so that uh, it only leaves 13 feet then. It'd be tight. And, yeah. and, we're, and we're trying to balance, like, the planning staff wanted to see, the, they really like to see two parking spaces per unit. So they really like to see 40. <laughs> 30 is required. We kind of met in the middle at 35. The traffic consultant has a good point. I could do some different things with the aisle widths, do angled parking, look at the loading space. In doing, once you do angled parking, you, you lose a space or two anyways. Yeah. And the 22 foot lanes, town staff was comfortable with. I agree they're a little bit tight. So that's something we'll look at, um, but it's a trade off. Um, we may lose a few spaces, but we'll take a look at it. They're good suggestions. for the uh, parking just to see how you guys are going to reconfigure that and don't have anything to add until we you know, sit back down and see what you're able to do. Thank you. Nick, any questions, comments? No, I pretty much agree with what the board said so far. All right. All right, Chris, you look like you're... I've got a couple. I can go after you. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, Jason, I just want to make sure I understand the magnitude of the concern over site distances at the exit drive and how much Exiting the site, site drive looking west. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. And so, and to be more clear, what the solution that you suggested and the applicant, I think, has latched onto is making it so you can't park street on the street as you're looking in the easterly direction from that site drive. Is that accurate? Correct. If, if there's no vehicles parked there, it is a clear sight line to the east and sight distance isn't an issue. Um, the context that I was, uh, certainly on street parking is, is a concern for any town. Um, the applicant had recommended uh, no parking within 20 feet of the driveway. And really there's not a lot of space in between the two driveways. So if, if uh, parking were prohibited for 20 feet on either side, you're really probably only gonna fit one car right in front anyway, and, and but that car would be blocking sight distance to the east, hence my recommendation to, to uh, prohibit parking for the entire stretch in between the driveways there. Okay, but there would be no, would there be a need to continue that out further beyond the entrance drive? Or beyond would, here? That's, no. That doesn't make it, doesn't add any value as far as sight distance goes. Correct, um, because there would be no vehicles exiting. Eastern driveway. And you can see, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, but that, and just to be clear, that I guess for the board, that, you know, that's, that's town road. That, so we'll need to, if that's going to be the solution to the issue, I think we'll need to discuss if that's possible and if it is possible, how we, how, how that happens, because that's, that's not anything the applicant. And the, in the uh, response letter from Vanessa, they did acknowledge 
that they would be willing to do that and they think it's a reasonable thing pending approvals from the town, any necessary permits and, and whatnot. Let me start with engineering and perhaps even some electronics. There are, I think if that's the solution that there would be any number of hoops to jump through in order to make that happen. Now, following up on yours and you maybe have other stuff. Go ahead. Please go ahead. But, um, for clarification purposes, did you ever your report of the traffic study discover that perhaps parents waiting for students were standing cars standing cars on the property or just in front of the property? We observed both cars on the property standing waiting to pick up their children as well as cars in front of the property. Um, and so from a from a, a no parking standpoint, does it make sense because technically if they're sitting in their car they're really not Parked? Is it like a no standing zone? Yes. More, more applicable there? Or? And, and that is the uh, the sign that, that they had suggested as well in their response. I think it was no standing anytime. No stopping? No stopping anytime. Yeah, no stopping. Right. And, and some of that's probably attributed to people know it's vacant. Yeah, right. 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 So they're going to try to get off the street, use a lot now. Once it becomes an active site, some of that should resolve itself. But yeah. I agree generally with, with that statement. You know, if people know it's a vacant, empty site, people are, are more inclined to, to use it to pick up the children. Okay. That's all I got. Good. All right. Um, I had a couple of, um, all right, I, I had a couple of just either comments and some of them are questions. As it relates to the, while we're on this, you know, school pickup and the 20-foot uh, parking, uh, you also uh, mentioned a, a, a curb extension between the driveways. Can you explain to me why one might be more advisable than the other and that the, that the applicant chose the, uh, the, the signage versus the, the, sure. the curb extension? Sure. Um, so just so everyone's clear, the curb extension, it's really a, a bump out. So, so right now the eastbound uh, lane on, on Woburn Street from the double yellow to the curb on the south side I believe it's 19 feet, basically an eight foot parking lane and an 11 foot travel lane. Um, so what a curb extension would do is, is physically uh, narrow the roadway in that area, you know, maybe another six feet out. That would physically prevent anyone from parking there because really there's no room. You, you, you just would have your travel lane and a, and a smaller shoulder and there is no parking there. So if there was a big concern from the town that, okay, well, we put up no stopping any, any time signs, if there was a concern that people would ignore that and just, oh, well, I'm only here for 10 minutes to pick up my kid, then, then the curb extension would be a, uh, you know, a physical measure to, to really enforce that and, and prevent people from stopping there. An added benefit of a curb extension is that it reduces the pedestrian crossing distance uh, basically making it safer for, uh, for the pedestrian crossing here. Um, and it does that by two ways. It, it, by shortening it, it um, reduces the, the exposure that any pedestrian has in the roadway. And it also, if there are vehicles parked sort of over here or over here, it gets a pedestrian farther out into the road before they're really in the road. And therefore, a pedestrian waiting to cross is more visible. Um, the, the safety issues of, of that pedestrian crossing are somewhat mitigated, uh, particularly during school hours with the crossing guard that's, that's already there. Um, as to why the, um, why the applicant probably went with the, with the signs is I'm sure uh, largely driven by cost because um, there are significant costs in terms of changing the, the, uh, the curb line, the additional road work, um, whenever you, you have a, uh, a curb extension, um, you may be creating a new low point and have to add drainage and the catch base and things of that nature. I haven't reviewed the, the grading of the roadway in detail by any means. Um, given, given the size of the, the, the project and, and what they're hoping to do here, I thought that the signs were a reasonable measure to address my concerns. Thank you. Uh, the board members have obviously uh, echoed a lot of the same concerns I have. I, get, I think given the, 
the challenges on the site, however, the, the fact that they're above the required parking minimums, space minimums, you know, I'd, I'd really be interested to see how, both in your figures and how, you know, even anecdotally or policy-wise, uh, you'd, you'd manage the parking, you know, that, that loading zone. Uh, I particularly, you know, given the, the tight squeeze, I think there might be a better place for it. Um, you know, not that the, the, the consultant's uh, suggestion is the right one. And I, you know, while we were on the subject of the, the dumpster and the parking, I also think perhaps I want to take another look at where you're placing the dumpster. It's next to a stairway. People are going to walk by it during uh, times when the dumpster might be filled. Uh, and, you know, par you know, parking spaces, a stairway, you know, pedestrian access, and a dumpster, you know, just environmentally, aesthetically, you know. Maybe you know again you, you know it's you're not tight for space. I mean I I understand the way you have it configured. There may be some challenges, but 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 generally you know I, I call those uh, those things out to your attention. And certainly um, um, you know more you know, the, the loading zone might be an issue. John, that's that's all I have. John, you had one more thing, and then sort of a, yes, you know, <coughs> the, opportunity to, the one question I had was a follow up on what uh, Chris had mentioned and you picked up and you called it. And that is <clears throat> exiting the driveway, um, the proposed driveway, from the uh, condo units. <clears throat> Turning um, west onto um, Wilbur Street, whether it's uh, pick up after school or not, for whatever reason, but allowing, except for the curb extension, not allowing people to park right in front of the proposed uh, development. They park up in front of now uh, St. Um, St. Agnes. St. Agnes. Uh, Agnes's Church, which again uh, gives you a difficult sight line coming out and turning left and going down Wilbur Street. Um, the thought that I had when I was looking at that and then looking at the plan I know it's not a popular suggestion, but uh, coming out of that driveway, a right-hand turn only um, would be more appropriate because either you're gonna, you may decide to cut straight across the street and go towards Temple to get to the middle school, or you're gonna make a left and get down towards the light towards Woburn and West Street, and you can't see because of uh, cars that are parked in front of the church and you can't see up on the sight line. So uh, to me, it, it's, a, it's an accident waiting to happen. Because I know that even though it's a development, uh, people um, at the time uh, possibly could pull in or turn around, drop their kid off and keep on going. I shouldn't say kid. Drop their students off uh, then then keep on going. Um, but that's a busy time of the day either coming or going. So I'm wondering if uh, that has been considered. Don't answer, uh, just think about it. And he said, I know it's not very popular because people who live there are not gonna want to no. exit and turn right and go east uh, on Ruben Street. Go uh, around the block to get up, exactly. back up to West Street. But they could get out on the east. Yeah, that, that's what they would do, I would expect. If you said that, John, is to take take the right on Ruben and go down to the next Street, which is capable only street to get over to uh, Prescott, yeah. and, then, and then go uh, west on Prescott up to West Street, which is an easier for them to get out. Yeah, but just whether just somebody does that or not, I would tend to think not. But that's why I was looking for <coughs> both police and fire right. to interact in this because we have. I, I wouldn't leave that up to the traffic engineers, certainly, uh, whether that was feasible or not. That's the only other problem. Right. I, I hesitate. Of the board dictating traffic regulations, I, do, I really do. I, no, I, I, I just, know it. I know it's a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. All right. It, and, and it's like, it, it, if I could just interject. Sure, we, sure. We Go talked on that uh, curb extension. You call it. I, I used to call it a, a roadway neck down area or something in there. To me. 
putting something like that on Woburn Street in the middle of a block, not being the, I think it would wreak havoc with DPW snow plowing operations, et cetera, people not knowing it's there. Uh, you know, even, even at night, if it's dimly lit, somebody coming down and uh, hugging the right side of the street, all of a sudden clips the uh, side of that neck down, not knowing it's there. I, I would, I would not think that would not fly too well with uh, engineering in town or DPW, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it wouldn't fly with the highway superintendent. Yeah, I would not think. plowing for safety because the plow guy would be going right down and sure. so if they get to know it, they could just run right into that yeah. curb line. Yeah, would they fight wrong. me on the islands and the cul-de-sacs. They don't like the islands. So right. as with everything, there's a trade-off, but it, I, it could be a safety issue. I would think so. But yeah, I certainly don't want to speak yeah. for engineering or the town's DBW or anything like yeah. that. Um, that is a common concern raised with, with curb extensions. And uh, that said, that there are, they are installed and, and constructed in lots of towns in eastern Massachusetts, they and yes. and they do work. So, um, but as with with most things, as with most things, there is, there is a trade off. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Perhaps hang for a bit while we turn it over to the applicant who. Uh, if they wish, can have any opportunity you like to uh, speak to. You've heard a lot from us and from the from the peer reviewer. And if you'd like to address any of those matters raised, um, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you very much. If I could turn it over to Jeffrey Dirk, our traffic consultant. Great. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Jeffrey Dirk with Vanessa Associates, and the traffic engineers in the program. And I, I do want to thank um, your review consultant for the thorough review. I think this is a very good example of a, a review that has resulted in a better project, at least from where we're, we're heading in terms of um, the project and its on-site circulation and things. So I think that's the benefit of a peer review. We've kind of seen that um, come to play here. I think the most critical thing that was brought up is the relationship of traffic volumes and the project with relation to the school. Um, and that was one of the things that was clearly lacking in the original traffic study. And I think what we've seen in terms of kind of the probing questions that have been asked is some of these things in particular relating to site distance um, and the vehicles parked along the site, which is something that as we looked back at the end of June, certainly wasn't there. So the conclusion as we looked at it, absent the peer review was, sight lines look fine. Typically, we would always recommend that you prohibit when there's on-street parking, prohibit at least one space on either side of the driveway. Uh, but I think as you've seen as a result of the peer review and looking at the March volumes when schools are in session, there's a need for a little bit more aggressiveness in terms of the restriction of parking. And so, you know, we, we've concurred with that, that you do need to, along the front of the property, at least along the frontage, have the no stopping signs put in place. Um, and just for context, it, when it says no parking, you can sit in your car with the engine running. So the no stopping is the more aggressive sign. So when you see no stopping, it's no parking and no idling. So you can't be there at all. So that's why that's um, recommended in the appropriate solution here. Um, as was mentioned, as you look along the frontage, there is a crosswalk there as well. So as you look at the actual real estate that's available for parking, once even you restrict the one parking space, there's probably not even enough room left for any parking. So it just kind of makes sense, clean it all up, do no stopping. Um, and as um, your consultant has mentioned, we obviously said subject to uh, review and approval by the town because it's not something we can do unilaterally. So I think the project is a very low traffic generator. And during the peak hours, it's 10 to 12 vehicle trips. So what you see in terms of what I typically talk to you about and your consultant would of delays and level of service, you don't really see any of that in terms of impacts related to the project. So the focus, I think, and, and, um, is really on the questions the board has asked and the consultant has asked is really looking at parking and on-site circulation and making sure that the relationship of those two results in a very safe and efficient circulation in the, in the project site. And I think, as you've alluded to, um, what you're going to actual, actually see as we look closer at the parking and the circulation within the site is we're probably going to have to reconfigure some things and there will probably be, will be some slight reduction in parking unless we can make up some space in the area. Um, the comments from the fire chief, I think, and the police chief as well, are gonna be most important as we look at the site plan. I mean, I can make recommendations in terms of aisle widths, uh, but ultimately the fire chief is gonna be comfortable that if he's fighting a fire there and there's vehicles parked in those spaces, that he has the ability to maneuver by those vehicles and get by if the building's on fire. 
supplier, he can stage operations that, the way he needs to. So that's going to really determine what flexibility we have in terms of those aisle width and where parking may need to be moved around. So I don't want to belabor that, but um, that's really where we're at in terms of the traffic study itself. I think we um, have provided recommendations. Those recommendations, if you heard, need to get onto the site plans, and I know that's something that we're working on as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, great. Uh, Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I don't have any. Anybody Thank else? Thank you. I appreciate none? that. Hearing none. Great. Um, all right. Thank you. Uh, so, moving on, flow wise, again, uh, niche engineering is not here, um, but we thought that since the applicant's here and is uh, probably prepared to speak to, if you wish, uh, the items raised in the March 21st niche report, and I know you. you Jack, you prepared at least one, if not more than one, uh, response or several responses, perhaps, to that. So um, what, what I think we'll do is hear what you have to say, perhaps, if any of the board members have any commentary or want to point out anything in the niche report, we could go ahead and do that. But as far as speaking for the niche folks, we work with town council to see if they can appear at the next meeting or respond in writing. Um, to anything that's that's raised tonight. So you have the floor, Jack. Great. Uh, again, for the record, Jack Sullivan, Sullivan Engineering Group. Uh, before I get into Niche's review letter, I just I wanted to comment on the dumpster location. Um, that came about, we had two neighborhood meetings prior to any submissions with the town. And originally, we were looking at trying to put the dumpster towards the rear of the property, somewhere along the rear lot line. Um, there were concerns from the neighbors having it placed in that location. Um, what we try to do is, at the rear line over here, there's some large trees, and, and there's a slope there that we're trying to preserve, leave that as open space, as a natural wooded buffer to the abutters. Um, in this area, we're putting in some uh, permeable pavers for parking, and then we have like a rain garden feature, which is gonna help with drainage and is also a landscape feature. Uh, so. We were trying to find some area outside of the rear lot line where we could put place the dumpster and recycling area. This seemed to make the most sense because it could be that there's the existing grade there. We can back it right into, to, to, we're gonna uh, punch out that retaining wall. It's gonna be about six feet high at the back of that dumpster area. So we figured we could tuck the dumpster right into that spot um, and it, it, it will be fenced with, with a gate. But that, that's why we picked that location. Obviously it's something we could look at but it seemed to um, I did review Niche's letter and I spent the most time on that. I, I didn't spend too much time with the traffic letter, but all the points you addressed, I, I will address in, in, in the, my upcoming revisions. Um, but with the Niche review, um, some of it was on traffic movement, some of it was on drainage. So most of my responses were to drainage. I'm not going to bore this group too much with my drainage design, but what we tr the existing site condition is no formal on-site infiltration system. Everything uh, is captured um, and, and moves out to an existing 30-inch RCP drain that runs along the easterly lot line. When we met with the neighbors at our first hearing, all we heard it was drainage, drainage, drainage. Um, presently, this, this, this is a, just a large paved parking lot that drains to a catch basin at the rear of the property. I don't know how well maintained that catch basin is. If, if leaves fall, blocks the grade, if the sump's ever been cleaned out. Um, but if, 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 that, if that catch basin's not maintained properly, it could over, overflow, flood the neighbors. So what we try to do is we look at this as a redevelopment project. Um, and what we're trying to do is uh, collecting the entire roofed area of the building now and putting it into an underground infiltration system which is great, we had good soils or sandy gravels, but the groundwater table is extremely high. The groundwater table is only three feet down. To meet DEP stormwater standards, you're supposed to have your system two feet above the, the high groundwater table. And then those sy systems are usually 12 inches high and then you need 12 to 14 inches of cover. So you'd be raising the entire parking lot up higher, it, it would get extensive. What the town of Reading's allowed me in the past is whenever I'm collecting roof runoff, that's considered clean runoff, and they allow a one-foot separation to water. The peer review brought up 
DEP stormwater requires two, and we have to request some sort of waiver. The town engineer had already reviewed the design, said one foot was fine. I do it for residential and commercial developments in town when it's strictly roof runoff. But I did put that in my response letter that really the best we can do is a one foot separation. I moved the infiltration field further up gradient towards the church to try to increase the coverage over that, but that, that's one thing that came up. Um, we also tried like a low impact drainage solution. So we have the infiltration field. You can see I created some landscaped islands throughout the parking lot to break up all the pavement on site. So we'll provide some green space, some landscape space, uh, provide some snow storage on those islands. The rain garden, I didn't take any credit for any storage associated with the rain garden, but since we presently just have sheet flow across a lot, we're pro pro proposing a riprap channel to go into a rain garden, which is really just like a depressed area with some landscape plantings, and then there'll be an overflow out into the existing catch basin. So I did a pre-development versus post-development uh, stormwater analysis for niche and submitted the results and I reduced the peak rates of runoff in all all storm events up to the hundred year storm for this site. So I think we've done a pretty good job with drainage but we'll see what comes back from the peer review. Um, I'm going to look into doing some type of angled parking for this. As I talked about earlier, the big push when we first presented this to the town, they'd really like to see two parking spaces per unit. That would require 40. Zoning's 30, we met at 35. In order to do that um, and still try to maintain some landscape buffer, I wanted to maintain at least a three foot landscape buffer for the residents on Wenda. Um, so that was my idea with the, the 18 foot deep parking spaces and the 22 foot wide aisles and still trying to get the number of parking spaces we need. I, I realize 22 feet is a bit tight. So I'll, I'll, I will look at the angled parking, but I will lose some spaces. As far as utilities, there's water, sewer, gas in Ruben Street. We're going to be running all new utilities to this building. There'll be a dedicated fire line uh, for fire protection for the building. With the drainage also, I, I added a berm along the easterly side. So any water that's sheet flowing on the parking lot will be captured by that berm and, and direct, directly to the catch basin and prevent any sort of water spilling over to the residents on Wenda Street. Uh, there will also be a stockade fencing put along the easterly um, lot line and the rear lot line. Um, the fencing one is, is going to stop 20 feet short of the, um, the entranceway just for any sort of, we don't want any conflict with sight distance, anything like that, so it'll stop 20 feet short. And I think we tried to do a good job with landscaping. Obviously, I tried to provide a three-foot landscape buffer to the, the abutters to the rear, to the east. Um, and as I stated, the, the, the bottom 10 parking spaces are going to be a, a pervious paver. So that's another way of trying to eliminate some pavement on this site, provide parking, but also promote drainage for this site. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll get comments from the fire chief on, on the foot aisle width that he's looking for for fire protection. Uh, but we did have a DRT meeting. We had two neighborhood meetings. And it's, it was an A&R plan that's already been signed subdividing this off the church property and it's just saying it had gone before the ZBA for the parking calculation for what the church did. Um, I'll wait to see what Niche comes back with for any comments. I, I did put some things together, but in everyone's defense, I submitted those on, I think, Monday of this week, so it, it, it wouldn't have allowed enough time tonight anyways to properly respond All right thanks Jack yep uh, again given that niche is not here um, does the board want to offer any comments I guess either on the niche report that we have uh, or on what Jack's had to I had to say about his response I guess mostly focused on on the drainage aspect and runoff aspect um, but I, you know, the reports here in front of you. We're here. If the, you know, if the board would would like to highlight any areas, certainly briefly, I would I would think that probably would be um, 
acceptable, uh, but I think if we're going to get into any detail, we ought to hear back from Niche first. Um, Robert, did you have any, I, any I, comments? I did, uh, based on, on some of the things Jack had brought up. One of the things I'm, I'm uh, thinking of, Jack, you noted the catch basins down in that uh, southeast corner of the lot, uh, possible problems for the neighbors if those that get blocked up, et cetera. Uh, can those be handled in the uh, operations maintenance plan for the site yes. in regards to annual clean outs, et cetera, uh, yes, on that? And, and I notice you're, you have solid floor, uh, solid floors on your catch basins uh, there. Uh, so that has a sump that needs to be cleaned out probably annually too. And those might want to be all done in the operations and maintenance plan for the site that uh, there should be annual clean out of the storm drain system. Right, and that's a good point. So Niche did ask for an operation and maintenance plan. Mm -hmm. I did provide one. The town as well, there's annual reports that have to be submitted, I think by January 15th of each calendar year for sites like this that okay. has to go to the engineering department for review. I could add, the, I, I didn't put those catch basins in to be cleaned and inspected annually, but I will. Okay. Okay. Now, are, are those, are those, uh, uh, I don't know, what's the best word, Con constructed right over that 30-inch drain pipe you said? It's shallow cover, because there's a 30-inch pipe, there's, there's only about one foot of cover. Is it really? Yes, it's very shallow. So are the catch basins connected to the pipe? Yes. Uh, via, an, via the catch basin outlet pipe? One of them sits, I think, right over the pipe. Yeah, well, that's what I was asking. It's Is almost it's like a doghouse catch basin. Yeah. It's, it's constructed so, directly so over it. But one of them's offline. But I, I can take a closer look at those. I may go back out and pop those and see. Yeah, okay. it would seem right. Yeah, those are two existing catch basins, and certainly you're not reconstructing those, or the town hasn't uh, looked into that or anything like that. But obviously those are the ones that have maybe some concerns for the neighbors in the past, and, uh, and you know, we just want to try to keep those as clean as we can, I guess. That makes sense. On the neighbors, yeah. Uh, to pass, no, another couple of things as I had gone through this, what was it? six weeks ago maybe when we get the plans and then we've had some continuations etc uh, on that uh, on the stockade fence jack on the uh, easterly side uh, is there a height on that six foot is it I, I i maybe missed it but i didn't see it in the plan does it say six foot it does not anyway, anyway. but it'll be added yeah it's going to be a six foot that. Fence. and uh Likewise with the, now I was curious about the post and rail fence uh, that you have going between the church and the site, and then you have a table on that, and it's almost like you have, you given the, whoever builds it, the contractor, whatever options, if you use this type of wood, or if you use a four by six, well then you have to do that post spacing this size, if you do, is that what you really intend to do? I, I'm, I'll clean it I up. would specify things myself. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'll clean that up. And the idea with that is, anyone parking there, we wanted some sort of restriction. Exactly. With the wall and the hill to yeah. prevent. Yeah, I, I found it. Uh, I'll, I'm going to run into problems giving contractors an option I'll clean on up materials. I'll clean up that detail. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, the last thing I had. And I had a question. I know you alluded to it, I think, when you were talking about utilities for the site and stuff. Uh, what about uh, the uh, private utilities, such as electric, cable, TV, telephone, etc.? And I see you have a utility pad over here on the uh, westerly side of the church, the, the, the rear of the uh, building. And is that where? Your pads are going to go yeah, for where the transform are, is, etc., and your connections for uh, uh, cable TV, well, telephone. The, the electric cable telephone will come in overhead. It will, okay. On the poles. The, the, the reason we needed to find a spot to put some of the condenser units. Okay. They can't go on top of the, the building. Oh, that. So we, we picked a spot we wanted to at least show on the site plan. They haven't been designed at this ah. point, but we wanted to have a spot for the condenser units to go. And that's what that is, the, or, the utility or, pad? Or if like a transformer was needed or something like that. Yeah, well that's it. I mean, the, the last 40B we 
pay out here. We had some issues with uh, right up to the last minute where the transformers were going to go and working with uh, the electric company on that. So that's something that uh, you may want to get squared away. transformer would be up close closer to the street I would think so yeah. I would think they don't want to pay for the one up there for, for, for their access but uh, this is something that uh, will most likely have to be uh, uh, ironed out here before uh, uh, we finalize things on this and then the uh, last thing that I had uh, noted as I had gone through it in regards to the waiver request I was reading through and I'm not, uh, there was just one that I had an issue with, and that was uh, the one, the re waiver request for uh, uh, fees for the project, for adding, for loading fees for the project. And to my way of thinking, there'll be substantial additional wastewater uh, inflow going into the source system on this project from what was there previously. Uh, obviously, you're talking 20 units, uh, what's, what, what are we talking, 33 bedrooms. At uh, what? A hundred, is it just 110, 110 gallons, 110 per, gallons per bedroom? Yeah, 110 right. gallons per day per bedroom, and that comes out 3630, 3630 gallons per day, uh, come from this. Not a great amount, but still, it's greater than what was there before. Right. So I, I would think that uh, there would be a. Uh, a fee on this in regards to what the town's issues are. The town, the town does require an I, I, an II fee, infiltration yes. inflow fee. Yeah. It's four times two times your flow. So uh -huh. in this case, it's eight times. Three. Eight times three thousand six hundred right. approximately. But you do get a credit for whatever the past use was and whatever that flow okay. was. You can you can take off. So you'll have to work that out. So. Josh and I have been going back and forth yeah. on that. I'm not sure how the, if we were looking to get a waiver from the full amount or if it was going to be reduced or if and we that's something reduced. difficult for the okay. no, so so that's something we're still you're still working on. Yeah, we are working on it. But we're aware that there is a fee. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thanks, I'm off Robert. It. John, anything on the niche or the <coughs> or, or uh, Jack's well, response? Um, it appears that uh, we're coming down to parking or parking related situations again. Um, not again with you, but I mean, again in the Ford <laughs> um, And I'm, I would ask Chris, and then I'll come back, Josh or Jack, and ask both of you. Um, as I understand it right now from what Josh had said earlier, um, the 24 spaces uh, to the rear that are dedicated to the church have got to be available. Uh, seven by twenty-four. Uh, I think that's right. Although I'd have to double check. I I don't think I participated at all in the, the special permitting process for that. But I, that is my understanding of the permit. I haven't reviewed it recently. But is that a it does. It says exclusive yeah. use in perpetuity. Okay. Um, so that that that's a major issue. I mean, the the reality, the issue is there legally. But the reality is that when this church is not using it for any space, um, those ex extra spaces that you need for visitor spaces or whatever are going to be used by the occupants. Um, the only time is going to be during the course of a day or an evening, like uh, during particular seasons, Lent, Easter, uh, Christmas, whatever, Thanksgiving. But, um, I, I, we haven't designated yet uh, where those 24 spaces are, or have we? We have. On the plan, they are identified with a, with a C yeah. symbol. On the uh, westerly face inside. So. Okay. Okay. Then, um, and, and, and just follow up question. Are those de so designated because that's where you want to put them, or because that's where the special permit says they have to go, or because that's where your contract with the church says they have to go? No, it's simply, they seem to be the most practical based on where the stairway is and the lot. Right. Accessible to the region. church. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we include the permeable spaces because they're going to be used less frequently, you know, theoretically. Um, okay. A lot of it's going to be management because we have 24 exclusive for the church, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, probably used 5 to 10% of that time. Yeah. Um, the 
35 spaces for our site, of which we need to have 30. We have five extra. Plus, we have two visitor spots on top of that that the church can use and we can use. So we do have some movement. I think Jack can, can do some good things with the park on this still. Um, the park itself, it will not be assigned to any specific unit, and I'll submit a letter that explains what the intent is of the park management. Um, generally, I think we have enough parking that we don't have to worry about assigning a specific space to a specific unit. And as we look at the shared space for loading, um, because we have some extra here, the idea is that that space will not, we can make special marking on that. Um, we, I think we can manage that space so that loading is always going to be available within that area when loading has to happen. Um, so I, I will submit a letter that kind of explains what our intent is on that. I think we'll answer a lot of questions. The other question was, are we talking about designating spaces and you just answer that is probably not. And we'll talk about that later. The other one was the uh, double usage of the uh, space for the loading area versus parking space. Uh, that's something we have to go down uh, the road with. And, um, the other, the only other issue that I saw um, that Jack reacted to and Nitsi um, had reacted to was uh, snow removal. Um, supposedly on here there was, in the newest plan, it was listed as snow removal area, but I couldn't find it. It's on the landscape plan, John. Uh, so, on the landscape plan, there's a snow storage area in here. And then on the landscape island, there's some areas. Well, we understand we're undersized for snow storage on this site. So uh, we know the, the owner was going to enter into some sort of uh, agreement which we be provided with um, for, for snow removal from the site. But we did try to designate some areas. Obviously, I don't, nothing can go in the rain garden area, and we don't want any snow melt going towards the abutters. But we did try to pick out some areas that are open space areas that could, could hold some snow. Well, for the size of the lot versus uh, what we've had in storm in the last few years, except last, <laughs> last year, um, that means that <clears throat> you're going to have to. Well, I'm, I'm questioning. I didn't. I shouldn't assume that somebody has got to take the responsibility of the church spaces versus the spaces that are given for you. But the, but the area has got to be cleaned at all times. So somebody's got to take on that responsibility. That's something that you, under the management aspect of it, is going to have to decide. And within the easement, within the church, we have taken on that responsibility. That's that's the only uh, other issue. I think the rest would be with, uh, again, would be with parking. And I think we're going to get back to that with uh, Chris. The only other question I had, Josh, you had mentioned that you had more or less established um, or negotiated uh, 35 spaces uh, for the, the unit. Uh, that means that the board uh, should not have to worry about that or should worry about that or... Uh, if I can clarify, I think what happened was through the DRT process, town staff said they wanted to see two for one on apartments and parking. Um, Jack's work in, in trying to come up with a plan based on what the church needed, what we needed, et cetera, we, we provided 35. I think that got us to the point that through the DRT process, town staff said, okay, you know, we're satisfied on that. Obviously, the board can overrule and decide whatever we want, but we do want the parking. Well, I guess the minimum is 30. And my response would be that ultimately the decision is yours because you guys issued the permit. But I would very much like you and the, prefer you guys in the DRT and our peer review consultant and ultimately the applicant all be on the same page as to how much parking ideally ought to be provided balancing all of the competing interests, the churches, the applicants, traffic circulations in general, and you know, everything. So there may need to be some ongoing discussion between this board and the DRT to, you know, try to figure out what that correct what what the best number is. Um, I can't answer that as we sit here tonight, but I can I can uh, have some conversations and be able to be able to report back on that.
from the D, you know, I can attempt to speak for the DRT next time we're together, um, if that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, I mean, communication to me is the key there, whether, it, whether the DRT's uh, reports have been made available to us or not, I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen them. Um, and you know that type of feedback would really be helpful. To Absolutely, the board and to you know, and the DRT is full of uh, all the necessary expertise, but they probably didn't have the benefit of you know a green international peer review when they were doing their work and coming up with their numbers. So there's there's a balancing act uh, to be performed here that I'm sure we can get to uh, a good result by the next time we're together. But great. And if you're going to follow up with that question, that that'll come down to the aisle widths as well. The reason I picked 22, I wanted three-foot landscape to the abutters. It's, a, it's an existing site. I really can't control it. Right now, the traffic circulation's all, what's marked out there, the stalls are only like 15 feet wide. There's no, the aisles are below any sort of standard. So I'm dealing with an existing footprint, trying to work with it. Um, I don't have a problem going, trying to do the angle spacing, but I'll lose some parking that way. Or with this, plan I have now, we get additional parking, but the aisle width a little bit is a little tight. And I guess my suggestion is that it would be worth having you guys look at the angled parking with the loss of a space between now and we're next together so that we can see it on a plan and have the difference. Have our guys look at it um, and not hold off on that exercise until we hear back from DRT. I think you know we can we can talk to DRT while you guys are simultaneously exploring the alternatives would be my suggestion. That'd be great. And along with the uh, the letter from the fire department, with which uh, Jack said that he could provide, but that should have come to the board to begin with. Yeah. Um, same thing with the police report. Uh, we need something be, clearing the, the police aspect of, the of it too. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, it, it's a you're absolutely right. It's a real balancing between the engineering aspect of it, the space we have to work with, yeah. and a predetermined or pre-agreed upon them spaces that have to be allocated towards the church of the 24, where they're located and so forth also. So I mean, the crux of the matter is really in the parking again uh, and establishing all that. So any transparency amongst the board and, and the rest of the uh, town. Uh, you know, we, can, we, can, we can request and hopefully get letters from police and fire into the record before your next hearing. So, yeah. Eric, any feedback? Um, just a quick question. This might be for Josh and Chris. When it comes to the church parking, I know that the easement's exclusive and perpetual. Um, I don't remember what the language ended up being because I, I know that uh, that was a complicated case. <clears throat> Does it preclude the possibility of leasing it out? It just seems tough to have all that open area for such a extended time during the week, uh, you know, be available for what, you know, probably would be for no use. And I, I just don't know if, <clears throat> I know it's an easement and I know that we have some specialized language in there, but if that's something that you could, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe we could explore that and I, I don't know if that's feasible or not, you know? I think it's solely from the, from the permit decision that says exclusive and perpetual, which, which guided us into the easement. So I think from yeah. the easement's perspective, it doesn't necessarily restrict us, but I think from a use perspective, what the church is required to do, they would probably have to come back to this board uh, and have that decision modified. So that's off the top of my head. Yeah. We'll, we'll look into that. And then the only other thing is, I know that you know we're just in the preliminary stages. It's helpful, um, and I know, Jack, you have a great relationship with the town, so you, know, you go in, you talk to them, and they're like, yeah, I know that's fine. Um, but if you have um, letters that can just address those things specifically with the new plan, I think that that helps, and you know, it you know resolves the you know the issues with the, um, uh, the alley widths, the parallel parking, just stuff like that, just to have that we can say, oh yeah, yep, that that department's checked it out, they're all set with it, or they raise these slight issues, but they're non-issues, just so that we can be kind of in that loop. And, and there was, I know, town staff did put together review memos to this board because engineering had reviewed my drainage design I wasn't at the first hearing that Josh came to but I, I think at that hearing it was decided there'd be peer review for traffic in the civil mm -hmm. um, so I, I do believe town has commented on that in past <coughs> reviews. 
But obviously, any plan change now right. would, would generate additional comments. It's a good point. That's it. I had a question um, about drainage on the proposed and existing plan in the parking lot on the west side. There's a drain grate. I'm hoping you could just set, shed some light on what that is, if it's connected to anything or if it requires maintenance. Good question. And the answer is I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's a small little grate and it's, it's silted over. Um, couldn't get access to it no idea what it's piped to. It's not receiving any water right now. Um, so I don't have that answer. We, we, we could clean and try to investigate it. Um, so do you think it would go away on the new plan or remain? I think it would stay. Okay. Um, I, I hate to take it drain out not knowing where it goes to, but it would have, we'd have to clean it. Um, <laughs> but we're offering so much additional drainage, we're, we're reducing the amount. I, I'm not taking any credit for wherever that drain does go. Uh, but we're not making really any grade changes in the parking lot, so it's it's not like it would get filled over. Um, it, it could still be accessed in, at the surface. Okay. Town engineering department have any information in that regard at all? No. No. Probably really old. It's a private drain of some sort. It's, it's, but it's got to run out somewhere, doesn't it? Go somewhere. Could be an inf it could have been just an infiltration. I don't yeah. know if it's yeah. piped somewhere. Yeah. But it's all silted over, and then I, I didn't investigate it. Anything else, Nick? Um, you know, the board members have raised uh, most of the uh, areas that I had uh, identified. Uh, certainly, we'll get to waiver requests. Uh, you know, certainly, we'll get to revised plans. Uh, there was lighting details. Uh, you know, that snow storage plan is certainly something we're going to look at. You know, the signage that we discussed. Um, you know, other than that, I, I think I, you know, I'd like to see what Niche comes back with uh, and, and the applicant comes back with in terms of revi revised plans and perhaps there's more, uh, you know, peer, you know, minor peer review just to kind of cross check everything that's new and. Um, and, and everything that's been requested thus far. So, I, I, you know, that's really where I'll, I'll keep my comments right now. Um, I guess in the interest of uh, following hearing protocol, is there anybody here in the public? No. So we'll open and close the uh, public portion of the hearing tonight. Uh, are there any other um, board comments? I think uh, one plan is to pick a date. I know we've got town meeting coming up. Uh, and I think Kim on our desk was a upcoming, yeah, here we go. We have an upcoming uh, open date. Looks like the um, looks like the next open date is May 11th, so it's a little, probably a little, a little more than 30 days. Um, but that gets us a, to a next open meeting. Is that okay with you, Chris? That's fine. All right. Uh, so I guess what we'll do is... Um, we will uh, continue till uh, May 11th. I guess we'd probably do it by motion. Somebody want to? Somebody. That's agreeable with the. Uh, yeah, you, okay. you you nodded, Josh, right? You're yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, perhaps we just make a motion, put it on the record. Sure. Uh, continue the hearing to to uh, May 11th. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All right. Second. All in favor? All right. We continued until uh, May 11th. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Team sign in on the sign in sheet so they can be identified for the minutes. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, why don't we tackle the minutes? <laughs> 
response is, is I turn them in Monday after the meeting. It just crosses down the mountain. No, no, I We know okay. how uh, All right, it's one of burdened and uh, busy, busy. Yes. and we, we understand this. I understand the staffing concerns, and I'm sure you got nothing else to do but but do minutes. Um, so, you know, to the extent when I was looking at these, I remembered even anything that came out of them there. Almost a year old, May. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks my excuse. Me. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Next question. Yeah, actually, I got. Oh no, that's my second. Yeah. So, um, so what? I, what? I, if everybody's had a chance to look at them, I think I would prefer. And you can. You can. You can discuss this if we want to. I would prefer that we that we approve the slate, meaning just do one motion. All the minutes. Uh, list them all. List them all. One motion to, to approve, approve all the minutes. All. Okay. <clears throat> list them all. The dates. Second the motion and approve them. I mean, I've had a chance to look at them. I mean, certainly, please take a chance to look at them if you haven't. If somebody <coughs> has comments. A couple comments I have. Got to. Why, but all right. Well, then we'll then we'll then we'll have to take them piecemeal because we can't vote them all as a slate if you if you can't. if you're amending them. If you're amending a specific set of minutes, we'd have to vote that as amended. If we're voting the minutes right. as a slate, we'd vote them as they are. I, I, I think if you just uh, well, I suppose we could just say it, as, as it, amended. As always. amended, period. As uh, and where minutes, amended, perhaps. Minutes, Sorry, uh, go ahead, Robert. You know, go ahead. Such offer such your such uh, such such offer so your changes. That's probably that's probably an okay way. Okay. Uh, I had no comment myself, and, and I'll start it. Then we'll go. Uh, the May 12th, uh, 2016, I had no comment on those. So if we want to do them, uh, well, which ones did you? Which ones did you, you have comments okay, on? Okay, which ones I did. Okay, I had June 23rd, I had a couple questions right on the front page. We had a couple of names, Kim. Uh, about halfway down the uh, public names, we just had a name, Matt. That's all they signed in, Joe. yes. Yep, that's all they signed in as. That's, what, that's all we can put down. Matt and Joe, I, we don't, okay. If it's acceptable, then fine, I guess. Okay, that was all I had on that one. So that one's acceptable <laughs> in the group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, July 21st, page six. And uh, about halfway down, we get into the paragraph talking about landscaping. Mr. Gagnon, 76 Washington said, Street, said he appreciates the effort of the developer to provide privacy with the landscape, etc. He questioned the choice of Aphrodite plant. I think he means arborite. Arborite. Arborite, right? That, which is an ever evergreen. And I'm thinking maybe if we just cross that out and just say evergreen plantings. Is there a such plant as an Aphrodite? I don't, I don't know. I, there is. I've never heard of it. Is there? Yes. Kim okay. over, Kim's overruling you on that. Okay. One. No, we can, no, we can, we're going to change it to evergreen plant. Okay. <laughs> you like that better? Just generalize it, huh? We could just say question the. Plant selection. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're both ever. Uh, okay, nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Eight twenty-five is okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there were a couple. Of, let's see. Which one's first? Uh, September 1st, yeah, and I'm looking at that, and I did not see anything in there in regards to it being open and closed, the public comment section, the public meeting. September on 1st? On, on the uh, September 1st. On which one? The whole thing? The whole, well, 
Yeah. Oh, that, oh, oh, the the general. Ministry. Yeah. So we went through here and went through the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was the covered case number 1616. 1616? Yeah, that, which is page five of that. And that's where I had the comment. Uh, that when I went through it, I saw nothing in that case that we opened and closed the public okay. uh, comment section. Okay. And I think we probably did. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a request for a continuance, so perhaps we never got to public comment. Okay, possibly. Well, yeah. I mean, you can yeah. certainly. Possibly. That was, that was an applicant that I would refuse. Yeah. Them, so, okay. let's see. I'll pretend to know what went on. And I, let's see, this one, this one was very, yeah. What's the date on this one? This one's done a little different style. Somebody filling in for you? <laughs> oh, this is uh, October 6th. Date October 6th. Uh -huh. Okay. It's got the uh, town seal uh, on this one. 10 6 yep. Yeah. In, in uh, case 1619, again, I didn't see opening and closing of the public comment section on that, and that's when we did approve a special permit. Okay. And I, let's see, and also on that one, uh, we typically note who voted on that. There was, uh, let's see, okay. Mr. Hagstrom approved, uh, made a motion to approve the variance, seconded by, by Mr. Redfern. The motion well, was this, denied. This the people that attended the meeting, you guys. Okay. Yes, I, I will add that. Okay. Mr. Yeah, David uh, recused yeah. himself from that meeting too, so we should probably get who voted on that. And the uh, same thing on uh, case 1616 again, the continuation. Yeah, okay. I don't see the opening and closing of a public comment section. And who voted in, on that particular one too? Yeah, okay. No comment. That one. Okay, no, no, no comment October 20th. I had. Okay, just a little brief one on this one, David. November 3rd, this is a minor comment on uh, one, two, page three, down at the board, when uh, Mr. Trinello opened and closed the meeting due to no public comment. I think he opened and closed the public comment portion of the meeting. Hold on, on page three. Uh, third sentence up from the bottom. Yeah, third sentence up from the bottom. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And I think we just need to insert in there that he opened and closed the public comment portion of the meeting, and not the whole meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. And let's see, 10th, no comments. January the 5th, no comment. January 19th, no comment. Uh, February 16th, I wasn't there, but I read through it. I didn't have any comments. February 2nd? February 16th. Before that, there was a, there's another set of minutes, February 2nd. 2nd, I, okay, let's go back. Uh, Is that the one you were there for? Probably, yeah. Second, February 2nd, I do have it. I did, yeah, I do have some, uh, let's see, I did note I had a comment on that one. Okay, let's see, let's go to page three. Okay, let's go to page three. Okay, page three on February 2nd, Tim. Yeah. Page three. 
about halfway down that page. Mr. Redfern, stated concerns? Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, he suggested removing some parking spaces to create additional green space. Yes, so we can insert additional in there. Yeah. And then I believe, let's see, over on case on page five, case 16-2. Second paragraph, Mr. Redfern requested a revision date be added to the draft decision. Okay. To ensure everyone's work and the most updated. And that was it on, on that, but just those two comments there. And February 21st, no comment. March 2nd, no comment. That, that was, that's what I had. So now we could take as a blank the following. March 12, 623, 8, 4, 825, 10, 20, 11, 10, 12, 15, 105, 119, 216, and 321 as a whole and accept that group and then modify the others. Well, we're going to accept all of them. I we would can say just, let's do them all and just say as amended. That's what I would say. Well, do okay. them all. Just let's all do the whole, as let's do the whole as list as and just say as amended. Okay. As discussed. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's right. what I would so say. I agree. I, all right. So somebody want to let's make a let's get a motion on the table to approve them all. You you mentioned most of them. Okay. Somebody go through the list. Okay. I'll make a motion that the board approve the minutes for the dates as of, amended. As amended, the dates as as amended of. May 12th, 2016 minutes, June 23rd, 2016 minutes, July 21st, 2016 minutes, August 4th, 2016 minutes, uh, August 25th, 2016 minutes, September 1st, 2016 minutes, October 6th, 2016 minutes, October 20th, 2016 minutes, November 3rd, 2016 minutes. November 10th, 2016 minutes. December 15th, 2016 minutes. January 5th, 2017 minutes. January 19th, 2017 minutes. February 2nd, 2017 minutes. February 16th, 2017 minutes. February 21st, 2017 minutes and March 2nd, 2017 minutes. Do we have something in there for the uh, March? I, I don't know. Oh. It, it, what? It just notes uh, here that he opened and closed it. Do we have, uh, we, uh, yeah, we do. Oh, well, yeah. that was just a one page. page. Okay. Yeah, there are a couple of just one sentence yeah. ones. Yeah, okay. The ones was. that I was at. Right. And I just came in to open and, open and close it to continue on. Okay, I'll the second all right, we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approval? Unanimous. Okay. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Hopefully we don't stack them up like that. Well, they're going, these are going in the recycle bin. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Save paper. <laughs> All right, so uh, not on technically on tonight's agenda, but on tonight's agenda are some other business items. Okay. Um, and I thought I'd just open them up, open those up with, um, you know, everybody's aware that Red, Town of Reading received a uh, one-year safe harbor from all 40 Bs as a result of the uh, MKM Reading. Uh, Reading yes. Village project, so we've got a reprieve for many new 40 Bs. Doesn't it doesn't affect this existing one that we just heard until February 22nd, 2018. So we won't hear another case. Another, they won't. The town is not required to accept an application for another 40 B in, in town until next February, February 22nd. So that's. I heard. Thing. I heard Tuesday.
reportedly filed on Monday, 150 units, Lakeview. Uh, but they said with this hiatus now, we won't see it. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I will have to recuse myself from that 40B project. The mm -hmm. town knows that already. Uh, I, I represented the developer that now owns that in the purchase. Well, you don't even know but if I that's going to be heard. You well, when it's heard. The yeah, when it's heard. When I it's heard oh, in oh, 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 yeah. March it's of 2018. What all this means with the February 23rd, 2018, when they can start accepting yeah. applications. Uh, you know, I won't. Well, that doesn't preclude them from hearing one. It just says they don't have to take one in. No, they do not have to accept exactly. an application for a 40B. So now, when somebody comes in and wants to file a 40B, yeah. the town says, sorry, we, you can't have it. Now, now, what it means when I heard, said, I heard that it was filed, what does that mean? I don't know. You have was, to ask Chris. It was person. brought in, and I guess. All right. Um, well, we'll figure out what it means. Yeah, <laughs> we'll figure out what it means. Uh, the next uh, piece is, um, Gene Delios asked me to inform the board and, and get some board feedback on a couple of things. One, newest one, I think, is an easiest one. Is so uh, the public services department, you know, is undergoing some changes. I guess Maureen Knight's retiring, uh, and then what? She's coming back part time. She is. Yeah, but that the duties of the department have to be reconfigured. And that might mean that we're Kim. But they're hiring a new administrative position to support uh, some of the nighttime government boards. Um, and with all the budgetary concerns in town, uh, you know, they want to minim obviously minimize overtime and minimize costs and minimize staffing to the extent that they can. Uh, so Gene has asked to share a thought as to whether or not ZBA would move our meetings from Thursdays to Wednesdays. So we could do first and third or second and fourth, whatever that means, Wednesdays. Um, Conservation Commission, perhaps, and ZBA would then meet on Wednesdays, either, again, one would meet on the first and third, one would meet on the second and fourth. And then administrative persons' hours would be staggered during the course of those Wednesdays so that their regular shift would be straight time, meaning they would work from whatever, 2 to 10, whatever it is, 8 hours, so that they could then assist the nighttime government uh, board, specifically us and perhaps CONCOM, mm -hmm. uh, and might then be in a position to have, more, you know, when, you're not working tomorrow, or at least you're not scheduled to work tomorrow. And so the earliest that Kim is available to address anything that's gone on tonight is Monday morning. Uh, and Gene also thought it might be a good communication, customer service thing. If we did it on Wednesdays, then Thursdays is an open town hall day that somebody could come in and address an issue from the previous evening's hearings. So. Um, I raise that with the board. I don't think, you know, we're just hearing it. You know, I don't, I mean, there's no night of the week that's t typically any better or worse for me. They all have the, you know, they, they all have the possibility of being worse, uh, but I don't have a standing appointment. I, you know, I, I serve in other boards, both nonprofit and town that, sometimes schedule their meetings haphazardly and they fall on Wednesdays, but, you know, it is what it is. So I could make that work, uh, I suppose, if we wanted to. Uh, but I'd be interested in hearing, you know, any board feedback as to whether or not there's any uh, concerns with that or um, thoughts in favor or ambivalence or just tell us when to come and we'll be here uh, you know uh, it, you know Jean asked me to raise it so I thought I'd get some feedback before I got back to her go ahead yeah 
one would, we're not an open <coughs> hearing. This is would, would that um, indicate that the person who is going to be administratively following the two boards that are meeting on Wednesday um, would would be able to follow and and do some of the yes. Follow the, the, the whole exactly. next day. Okay. Yes, that's what they, they would like. Okay. The reason I ask that is because in the 30 odd years that I've been associated with this board, it has never had an individual that you could go to specifically uh, for that. Uh, because it's always been, I mean, the town is, how should I put this, so s tightly scheduled or staff that it really doesn't give all boards equal time for support. And the, <clears throat> the board that seems to be always left out happens to be the ZBA. Because we're smart. <laughs> um, because we always write our own decisions, we follow up on everything that has to be done, um, but Somewhere along the line, exactly when you're doing like 40 Bs and whatever, you need some additional um, and support, yeah. and and you and you need feedback. Just as was said tonight, we don't have the transparency between uh, PRD, um, CPDC. Um, well, I mean, planning for, develop, developer for 40 uh, Bs. You know, we do get town council yes. here. Yes, here um, for the meeting. You know, maybe because this is a smaller one, we don't have, you know, Julie or Jean. I know, uh, you know, probably Julie. Um, and, you know, maybe when it comes. I think, I think we've gotten more help recently on the 40 Bs than Certainly. We well, of course we, we have. Yeah, of course years we have. Certainly you know, did. Too. We do. And, you know, and they've got a lot of work to do to just marshal all that information. So I, so I think we... I think we do. I think what John's referring to is the rank and file cases that come in the door. Exactly. Um, we are a board that doesn't have a, forgive me, Kim, specialist no, you don't. that is right. ex officio sitting with the board to advise. Conscom has Chuck. CPDC has Gene and sometimes Gene and Julie. And so, you know, the Board of Selectmen have the town manager, you know, so, uh, you know, and again, in this time of... Conservation has their person, too. Well, yeah, you know, that's what I said. Concom right. has Chuck. Um, yeah. And so, with all the budgetary and staffing concerns, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess it's worth raising, and, I, and I, you know, and, and I think it's a worthwhile question to ask. I think I know what the answer is going to be, uh, you know. Would it be? I mean, we had Glenn. You know, yeah. when you know, when he, when Maureen gave him candy and and convinced him to come. Um, but, you know, he you know, and he was here and he was helpful and he was the town the senior specialist, if you will, advisory to you know ex officio to the ZBA as the code enforcement officer. So, we kind of had it, and then Glenn slipped off. And, well, and retired, but even before but he retired, he kind of time. slipped yeah. off. And so, so again, yeah. the, perhaps just by you know, attrition, let's just call it, uh, you know, we've lost our staff, lead, you know, our, our staff specialist as a board. And I, I think, for one, it would be helpful yeah. um, to have a specialist ex officio here to guide us through the the daytime government portion of the issues before us. But again, given that there's budgetary constraints, uh, cost containment, you know, initiatives, you know, we're in a real numbers crunch. And, and you know, um, so all town departments are trying to streamline either not hiring, you know, people that have left through attrition or, you know, trying to hire strategically, you know. Maureen's retiring, so they're probably, you know, that's why they're probably bringing on somebody to sort of fill, you know, that salary spot, perhaps. You know, I don't pretend to know how that, how, you know, I didn't look at their budget, in other words, but I'm guessing that's what the case is. 
Um, and so, you know, is this administrative specialist, is, is somebody to work on the minutes, somebody to liaise with the, spe with the, the, the specialists, someone to be the, here's who you go to for issues involving the ZBA during, at the counter. Uh, but I still think it makes sense to have a subject matter specialist, you know, a specialist. Uh, and again, I, you know, I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, you know, it's certainly something that, and when I, when we talk about the next subject, I'm going to bring up, it'll it'll become a little bit more clear how I'm going to bring it up. But um, to get to your question, David, in just regards Wednesday, Thursday, uh, makes no difference to me. Um, yeah, I mean, so so yeah, I mean that's what, I mean I don't think it matters to anybody necessarily when they tell us to be here. Yeah, that's right. Um, if we can make it, we make it. Yeah. You know, uh, if we have other obligations, I don't have any, you know, there are some people that have, and you know, Cy and Kathy aren't here, but, you know, there are some people that have standing obligations on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. Uh, yeah. And if that means that they can't come on Wednesdays, then that would be a shame. But I'd want to hear from them before I say, Gene, we're all in favor of it, mm -hmm. because I'd hate to lose a board member because so they can never make a Wednesday. So, you know, I'll, I'll put it out to Kathy and Cy and, you know, just see what their feedback is. But I can generally let Gene know that the quorum here tonight um, doesn't have a feeling one way or the other is okay with a, with a Wednesday if, if it needs to be that way for, you know, to support town budgetary concerns and staffing concerns. So, you know, I don't, I don't have an issue with it. And I'll, I'll tell Gene that. Um, the next issue under other business is um, I was contacted by Jean and Julie uh, probably six weeks ago, maybe, to advise me that at the upcoming town meeting there will be an article presented that amends um, the uh, accessory uses and accessory apartments bylaw, specifically the table of uses. Um, and I got a little background on it. You know, I, there was a miscommunication. I was never brought into the loop, didn't even know that they were amending the, the bylaw, didn't know what the substance and sum of it was, but I've been brought up to speed. And whether that was inadvertent, you know, I'm, I'm getting my guess is it was inadvertent, and I've spoken to town staff about it, and it was. An oversight, but um, and you know they don't have to ask my permission to change the, the bylaw, but but it would be nice to have known that that was afoot. And so uh, the the sum and substance of it is this: uh, I meant to pull the decision, but this board granted a special permit and a variance for an accessory apartment on Intervale Road. Terrace? Terrace, I think. Intervale is. Terrace. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <coughs> mm -hmm. And uh, what happened, again, what we think happened was the developer, you know, construction manager on the project took some creative license with the board's decision uh, and built what essentially is a big behemoth looking garage structure, two floors that's right in the front of the house facing the street. And after it was built, the neighbors had concerns and raised concerns to everybody that would listen in town, from the selectmen to the CPDC to town staff. It's, it's notable that not one of those neighbors was present during the accessory apartment hearing on that case. However, that often happens. You don't care about it until it, you have to drive by it every day. I understand that. In response to that, there was a sentiment that the zoning bylaw should be amended in response to that, so something like that doesn't happen again. In the iteration of the uh, article before, that's going to come, it's been approved, it's on the warrant. Um, and the only way it could be amended, if this board feels it should be, would be to propose an amendment on the floor of town meeting. I'm a town meeting member, so I, you know, I certainly wouldn't have a problem doing that. But before I get there, uh, so the first, um, 
I guess, suggested fix is when we revamped the zoning bylaw as part of the zoning advisory committee years ago and changed this accessory apartment bylaw, we added some diagrams. We figured pictures are worth a thousand words. The proposed amendment to that uh, 5472 under accessory apartments changes the drawings to limit where a detached and uh, where a detached accessory apartment may be placed in the front yard and side yard uh, so as to prevent what happened on Intervale from happening ever again. So, so this board did nothing wrong in granting the variance and special permit. We interpreted the bylaw as it was presented to us at that time. That the outcome was that the neighbors had a stir. So, and I don't have any, I've looked at it, I've reviewed it, I think it's a fine idea that CPDC came up with to eliminate that from happening. You know, just tell them where, they, where it can't go and, mm -hmm. and now they know. Yeah. Uh, what they also decided to do was to change the table of uses for industrial and business districts and in particular with regard to, well, with regard to a couple of areas, changed the permit granting authority for accessory apartments for detached accessory apartments to the CPDC from the ZBA for detached. Now remember, there's by right and there's attached accessory apartments that add no addition to gross floor area. Uh, those are, those are um, Special by purpose. right. Well, no, those, those are by right. Um, detached accessory apartment with an existing single family dwelling required a special permit. Traditionally, for as long as I've been looking at the bylaw, that's been probably even longer, that's always been, the, the, the Board of Appeals has always been this permit granting authority. Uh, a detached, and that's in, uh, sorry, that's in the uh, business and industrial district. In detached accessory apartment in a residence district, uh, again, was changed to uh, the CPDC from ZBA. So all residential detached accessory apartment, um, just detached accessory apartments, not carriage house, stable or barn, not new construction attached just detached was changed to CPDC. Um, and then uh, in the A40 district, they changed a, uh, that uh, attached accessory apartments uh, with, new, with new construction or addition to a single family dwelling. Uh, they allowed it with a special permit from us. So, um, my confusion uh, is, was, and is still why a decision was made to change the permit granting authority. Now, whether or not that makes any difference to us as a board, I don't know. I wasn't consulted about it, didn't even know about it uh, until I saw the warrant article that had already been approved by uh, the selectman and is on the warrant. Um, my understanding from talking to town staff is the justification for that varies depending upon who you talk to. And I should say, John and I will be meeting with Gene or Julie, whoever's available, and two members of the CPDC. I think it's Ju uh, July. April 18th, it was the new date that was proposed uh, to just sit down and just to talk about it, to discuss how that came about, why it came about, um, whether or not we have any commentary on it and whether or not that changes anything. I don't know that it will or it won't or whether we want it to or we don't care. Uh, you know, my first question is, you guys aren't busy enough? You need more stuff to do? And, uh, you know, kind of tongue in cheek because I have a good enough relationship with them. Um, but I've heard things varying from the Board of Selectmen told us to do something about it, which I understand is do something that prevents them from being able, uh, applicants from being able to locate, to, to do what happened at the Intervale, Intervale property. To um, the CPDC is a better, it is a, is a better, 
I'm, I'm not is better equipped to address issues of neighborhood character than this board and therefore feels that they are a better permit granting authority for that perhaps town staff agrees with them because it's on the it's in the warrant uh, and I, I just I just like to have a which we're just gonna have a, a informal sit down John and I I figured you know chair vice chair would probably and I think it's chair and vice chair of CPDC would just sit down with Julie and just discuss it uh, what comes of that I don't know but I'd be interested in and certainly hearing if any of the board members here tonight have any sentiments one way or another that they'd like me or John to convey during the course of that meeting so I can say I speak for the board or at least the members that are here tonight uh, when I say X so I'll shut up for a second and and, and, and um, does anybody have any thoughts one way or another on it I think if you use the justification that they're more equipped for neighborhood character, you should subsume all special permit since the standard is whether it's substantially more detrimental. So yeah. take it all, you know, don't just take part. Right. So ultimately, what uh, what this when when and if this passes as it is, uh, the zoning board of appeals would hear variances and 40 B's for the most part. I mean, there is, you know, they, we, we did still maintain a couple of, you know, carriage houses and uh, uh, new construction accessory apartments, but I don't think, I don't think we've, I don't think we've even had any of those. Maybe we've had one. Um, well, the old six three, which is now what? Five four. Five, yeah, five four. Those aren't going to really change that much. Because you're exactly right. If if that's what they're intending to do, they need to take the whole package. Yeah. So take all of five four at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, because basically, that's the the largest portion of the cases that come before this board. So if they want to talk about the character of the neighborhood, we'll give them it all. Right? Well, I mean that's one suggestion, and that's where I dovetailed onto. Um, you know, there was some commentary regarding uh, this board's minutes and how much detail goes into our minutes, this board's decisions, and how much detail goes into this board's decisions. Uh, you know, I've never heard any objections to our decisions. I mean, they, obviously they get appealed uh, by right. Rarely. But rarely. But rarely. Uh, you know, we kind of know what cases are going to get appealed Before almost when they come in. Um, but uh, I've not heard any feedback that our decisions are deficient in some way, shape, or form, and I've not heard any constructive, you know, suggestions as to how we make our decisions better. More detail, you know, I, I write decisions, you know, the forms that we've used and passed down, look, we're not recreating the wheel, where mm -hmm. plagiarism is the sincerest form of flattery, so, you know, we take our form decisions and we, we adapt them to the facts of the case that we're writing them on, uh, you know, cover the bases. If it's a variance, we cover the four criteria. If it's a special permit, we cover the, zo the, the, the zoning bylaw that they're appealing from or applying under and, and, and talk about a vote. The minutes typically talk about public comment and the gist of the, gist of the meeting to the extent that they do. Um, but I guess, you know, an overall discussion of why, why this happened how it happened, um, whether it should continue to happen, and um, you know my earlier comment. Well, if there's concerns about how this board comports itself in terms of decision writing and/or the conduct of hearings, which are in the minutes, then we ought to have an ex officio member of daytime government here, specialist to, to guide us in that. And if the you know daytime government is the specialist on you know neighborhood character we act as an extension of them you know as an appointed board that reports to the board of selectmen so if we're advisory to the board of selectmen uh you know somebody somebody ex officio should be here i think uh if we're if there's going to be if if 
if there are concerns and or criticisms, and perhaps there aren't. I, I haven't really heard any that, you know, and this is not, you know, this doesn't hurt my feelings. You know, if they want to take this jurisdiction away from the board, that, you know, my, my thought is we've heard so much of it that we're all blue in the face by it. We heard it tonight even too. Transparency, collaboration, communication, and process. That wasn't followed here, and I want to make sure that it is. Uh, and, and daytime government does too, uh, which is why we're having that meeting to discuss it. So I don't dislike your suggestion. Um, you know, if you're going to take it, take it all, mm -hmm. perhaps. I bet they don't want it all, but, uh, but my real, you know, I, I would just like to have a fair and full discussion as to how, well, I mean, you know, it, it seems to me that, that, you know, telling them where, where it can't go in drawings is a fine solution to it, and I think that's what the Board of Selectmen wanted CPDC to do, and I think that's a fine addition. <clears throat> Changing the permit granting authority I'd like to just hear why that is. Maybe, maybe they have a great reason for it that I haven't heard yet. And maybe we as a board don't mind uh, or don't have any objection. But it, my, my thought is if I am not persuaded by the close of that meeting that the article as drafted is the way it should be enacted, uh, then I probably will appear either before the Board of Selectmen to let them know it's going to happen, if this time, uh, or when the article comes up for discussion, I'll let everybody know, when the article comes up for discussion at town meeting to propose an amendment to revert it back to the way it was. And in such a way that nobody's embarrassed, uh, but with you know justification as to why we think it ought to be or why I think it ought to be that way, I don't necessarily want to bring um, you know during the course of the meeting that we're going to have. I'd like to have board feedback, like Eric's, um, but you know at the close of that meeting, I'll I'll probably have a, a good idea as to whether or not we sh we should just let it happen. I'm satisfied that the the it's been communicated properly, and uh, it's transparent and collaborative, and, and now we understand why, uh, or I won't, and we won't, in, in which case I'll, you know, I'll, I'll move to amend it. It might be considered a friendly amendment, I don't know, it might not. Uh, and then we can hash it out on town meeting floor, um, and, you know, just based solely on, uh, you know, the justification for having it done, I guess. Uh, so those those are my thoughts. I heard Eric's thoughts. I don't know, Nick. I have a, a thought. I mean, a couple thoughts actually. I'd be interested in, you know, respectfully, what the rationale is for cherry picking, uh, detached versus non-detached. I'm also concerned that it might create an environment in the future where one board might be more friendly to a particular aspect of it, and it might actually encourage the petitioner to go for a different type of uh, accessory than they would have initially, where they might actually prefer to go detached or vice versa, based on how we treat it versus a different board treating it. Yeah, we lawyers call that forum shopping. Just thinking that myself. <laughs> What's it called? Forum shopping. Forum shopping. Okay. Going to a friendly environment that, that might be sympathetic mm -hmm. to your case. And that's, that would be my concern. That's a good point. Uh, that is, those, those are good points and points that I will certainly uh, raise. Well, the other thing, I've seen other towns, <coughs> like in Chelsea where I have my office, they, to get a special permit, you go to the ZBA, then you have to go to the planning board, <coughs> get their feedback, then you gotta go back to the ZBA. And that might just be complicating the whole process, but at least you could retain the um, you know, permitting authority with the ZBA with some sort of involvement CPCD, whatever. <clears throat> the, the goal of the zoning bylaw rewrite that I was part of 
was to streamline and Got simplify. It. I know, Ron. We're back the, to the, the process. Adding another layer. While I understand, I understand, you know, fair enough, you know, a fair assessment of the situation. I don't think meets with uh, the town's goal of making, trying to make the process less onerous, maybe not easier, but less onerous for applicants so that they're not getting bounced around mm -hmm. from board to board, back and forth. Um, you know, we've had a couple of applicants that had to go to, you know, every board in town mm -hmm. uh, before they came back to us and finally said, you know, they started with us, we sent them packing, and they had to go to, you know, three or four different boards and then come back multiple times and then come back here. And I think that's, that's not the goal of our zoning bylaw and not the goal of daytime or nighttime government. Um, but all, all good feedback, uh, John and I will take that to heart, um, you know, when we meet with, I think it's going to be Julie, because I know she's out for a few days, I think, next week. And so that's why we couldn't schedule it next week. And I think the CPDC folks couldn't make it. We were going to do it Monday. Uh, but people couldn't make it, so we're going to do it the following Tuesday, which still gives us an advance prior to town meeting, which is what, the 26th? I think so. 25th, 26th, I forget. It's on the calendar. Um, to see if anything's to be done about it or not. I, you know, and I don't know that anything's to be done about it or not. Again, nobody has to ask me, nobody needs my permission as the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals to do anything. Um, but the transparency and collaboration aspect of it would have, I think, leaned closer towards, tell me you're doing it. You know, just, you know, tell me what I'm, you know, just tell me. Hey, this is what we'd like to do. This is why we'd like to do it. Do you support it? No? Yes? Great. We're going to do it anyway. Uh, you know, thanks for your feedback. Right? serve the selectman's pleasure so we do I mean you know I'm a, I'm a volunteer you know mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a volunteer so I'm just trying to uh, you know my, my main goal and you know we've heard it all through this past election season in town is transparency in government uh, you know making sure that if we're making laws that people are to abide by that we've engaged in a full and fair conversation with all stakeholders and everybody's heard whether or not they're followed is irrelevant to that but everybody's heard uh, and understood and given you know and given a fair shot at being part of the collaborative process and that's that's kind of where I'm getting at it from regardless of the outcome how we got there is more important to me all right anything else on that we'll certainly report back to the board after we've had uh, you know an opportunity to meet with um, with the CPDC and, and um, the town staff, and uh, we'll go from there. Other than that, I don't have anything else on my other business, and so I'll entertain a motion, unless anybody else has anything they want to talk about, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved, second. John, all those in favor? Five zero zero. We are adjourned.